focusing on Google+. Plus. Uh, right in the beginning, I'm going to direct you to my Plus profile. Uh, please circle me. That will take you to the actual Plus URL. Uh, it's a great place to ask me questions, either private or public. Uh, well, I engage in a lot of conversations with third-party developers, starting out on Google Plus Hangouts, as well as some of the more experienced developers. Hangouts. There's something magic about Hangout apps, apps for those who haven't tried it yet. Uh, it's not just traditional video conferencing. We've had traditional video conferencing for many years. While it's been expensive and we brought down the cost to free, there's rich nuances inside Hangouts that make it a unique experience and make it a perfect platform to develop new applications upon. Some examples of, of how people are using just the Hangout apps, uh, Hangouts themselves. Uh, my team, for example, we have our office hours every week. Uh, in US time, but we're opening up uh, international time as well, where we answer questions from developers around the world. So I've gotten questions from South Africa, from China, from Mountain View. Uh, and it allows us to reach a broader audience and have a real conversation. And it's a room full of other developers, so they all learn together. Uh, another example is an AI course. Uh, with this, it's a public hangout uh, with some professors, enthusiasts, really interested in AI. Uh, really smart people, some of them have wrote many books, and when they start a public hangout, they include a hashtag. So whenever somebody searches for that hashtag or sees it in the stream, they can join and have a, a rich, meaningful conversation. Uh, and this is a free experience, so great learning. Uh, study groups in school, uh, also conferences, uh, meeting conferences, now that we've opened up to Google Apps, uh, and the Hangouts on Air. Has anybody seen the Hangouts on Air? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? When there's a public hangout uh, for, let's say, musicians or public speakers, we've enabled a feature that allows it for, once there's more than 10 participants, it becomes a YouTube live stream. So we had Desmond Tutu uh, speaking um, with the Dalai Lama. We had Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. And, and this is different, right? We, we haven't seen this very much. We've seen pieces of it uh, in separate applications, but not put together. Now hangout apps. The fact that we now have a, a canvas to work off is very exciting. Personally, I work on this uh, prop platform, and I find it the most exciting. When we launched Google Plus with Hangouts, we included a basic feature, which was, was pretty compelling. It was a YouTube shared experience. If you haven't tried it, I recommend. It's like watching a video on your couch, and your brother comes and sits down next to you. When somebody joins a hangout, uh, your Hangout with a YouTube video, it syncs up. So everybody's in the same place. It's fantastic. And then more recently, we've added the ability to have named Hangouts. So these AI classes can actually have a well-known URL. Uh, we've included native integration with Google Docs. So collaborative text editing and spreadsheet editing uh, is easy and seamless. Uh, that also includes screen sharing and whiteboarding. Um, and these are things we put in there. But as developers, I'm sure the first thing you saw when you saw the YouTube app was, how do you build your own? So, We've enabled uh, building applications in Google Plus Hangouts in a developer preview. And it's quite simple. What exactly are Hangout apps? Well, they're simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript widgets. If you can write it in the web, you can deploy it into Hangout. You upload it to our servers, we host it, we cache it, we serve it, and it's just there. Uh, it's simple declarative XML syntax to mark it up with metadata. And if you've done any gadget development in the past, you'll feel right at home. But most importantly, we've added additional functionality, not just the raw web APIs, but we have Hangout APIs. Some of them I demonstrated in this morning's talk, and I'll show you a little bit in our live coding section. But if you take away one thing from this talk, it's that whatever you can do in an iframe, you can do in a Hangout. OK? Bold. Remember that. Walk away with that information. This right here is the most basic Hangout app. Gadget developers, you can go to sleep for a second. Wrap it in very simple XML in a module tag. There's some module pref stuff that includes some metadata, like the name of the Hangout, uh, the Hangout app uh, and additional features that you uh, want to include. And then a C data tag. Whatever's inside that C data, C data tag, we take it, we serve it. So it's an open canvas for your application development. And how do you set up a Hangout app? It's actually quite simple if you've ever used any of our other newer APIs. It's all driven through our new API console. And so during the developer preview, you create a project, enable the Hangout feature, you register the URL for a well-known XML that's publicly accessible, 
and then we fetch that data and we serve it. From there, you get additional links and things to, uh, to launch that Hangout app, but let's have a quick screenshot. For those who haven't seen the, the console, once you've agreed to our terms and, and name your, your app, you can enable all these different uh, features in your project. So if you actually have a project that uses multiple Google services, you can manage it all in one simple interface. Once that's enabled, oh, that's, that's all you have to do is flip that button, right? So once you've enabled the feature, you get this new field for Hangouts, enter URL, and we generate a very simple URL that you can go ahead and share that around with your other developers and testers. Now, I did mention this is in developer preview, so it's not publicly accessible yet. So if you want to work with other people or show it off, just make sure you register them with the application project and share the link that you generate for testing. Again, you can actually reuse that link because it just tacks on some metadata and generates a, a hash. So now that we know how, what an, a, an actual Hangout app is, there are some key concepts that separate it from just a simple iframe. One is that, that JavaScript include that you saw really briefly, and that's providing you access to our built-in Hangout API. And with the Hangout API, we give uh, participant information, uh, such as their name and their Google Plus um, ID, shared data or the shared state uh, that allows you to create synchronized data across all instances of an application. And what's nice about that is it allows you to build you know, real-time applications and not have to worry about that simple backend for simpler projects. Access to some of the audio video. So in the demo, you saw the robot's head was talking with me. Uh, I was piping into the volume of the mic and, and responding to it with an animation. You can do things like that with the video and um, similar other uh, applications. Some layout information. Do they have the app installed? Do they have the chat enabled? Metadata that might be useful for your particular application. And lastly, the Hangout metadata. So what's the locale of the user? Let's say you have a multilingual um, uh, Hangout. You can serve different um, localized content that way, uh, or the name of the Hangout and um, the Hangout ID. The next piece is it is JavaScript, and it is a very uh, event-driven model. So it's all about callbacks. Um, for example, let's say I want to know when a participant comes and goes. You register your own callback method with the gappy.hangout.onParticipantAdded.add, uh, .add, and we'll ping the JavaScript library will ping your method whenever a participant joins and include metadata as an object that you can now leverage. So if somebody joins, we can send you their, their name. So then you can display their name whenever somebody joins. Um, when the volume changes, we can send you the, the new volume every time the volume changes. And then you can do something interesting with that. And there's also synchronous getters. So you can get uh, the participant information at, let's say, boot up or um, in the middle of a game or when somebody joins. Uh, and uh, of course, set them um, synchronously. And the last is the shared state model. This is very easy if you've ever done anything with real-time applications, um, and it just takes a quick demo to understand. And once you get it, you'll see how simple we've actually made it. So in this example, let's say Jerry Barry is doing something. So the robot moved across the screen. So I want to send that information to the Hangout server, to the shared state. Well, we handle the push to the server, we store it, and then the shared state propagates that to all instances. And it's simple as registering a new callback for the shared state. And now you can update your application, change the robot's position, uh, you know, change the color of the team, whatever have you. Now the coding section. I gave a little warning. I wrote this last night, so we'll see how, how much fun we have with this. You might have to help me a bit. But in this very simple demo, we're actually going to do something interesting. Uh, we're going to listen to an event. The, uh, a basic event is the list of current uh, participants when they come and when they join. That's when you're registering a callback. Uh, utilizing that shared model, that shared state. For this one, we have a very simple counter that updates across all the instances. And lastly, we're going to pipe, um, pipe into that, that audio video stream and make a very simple um, volume equalizer. So let's switch over. Um, first, I'm going to create a new project, just so you get familiar with that process. So let's do GDD. And I've created a new project. And these are all the services that we currently offer through the console. Um, and it's nothing more than enabling it. So I'm going to enable the Hangout API. So now my API is Hangout enabled. You can see right here I have a new tab that wasn't there previously. 
And this is where I can register my URL. Well, I haven't created an XML yet, so let's go ahead and, and do that. Here's a stub application that we're going to start working with. Eh. Oh, I forgot this is miscalibrated. Can you guys see that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. OK. Um, so this is a little bit more than that very basic application, but you notice that the beginning is all the same. We have the XML. We have the feature include. We have this very important JavaScript that allows us to access the feature, and then some HTML. The HTML is nothing fancy. We have a div that is a status indicator. We have a button that updates, that does something. It doesn't do anything yet. Uh, we have another button um, that's supposed to be, it looks like count button clicks. And then another div for labeling. That's it. Nothing very fancy. The interesting thing happens in the JavaScript. So even with this most simplest app, we have all the bootstrapping information that we need. So first, we need to have a DOM uh, handler right, to make sure that the DOM is loaded properly. And that's this very simple one-liner. Just include that. Uh, we also have to make sure the API is ready because it is an event driven. We don't know when it's going to be ready. So we have a um, gadget util.onload handler, which is for the DOM, and then we pass in um, this, this uh, um, API on ready handler. So already we're passing um, methods around because JavaScript methods are first class citizens. And uh, that method right here is it's an inline method. And then once it's ready, we call start my app. Uh, I've, I have some stub methods. So if you remember, we wanted to first, we wanted to do three things, right? We wanted to listen to people joining, we wanted to do a shared state, and we wanted to um, do me 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 measure the volume. So for each of those features that you want to monitor, we just register a callback with a new method to handle the response. I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, there's a count button click, so that's going to be the one that manages the, the shared state. And then we have this update participant method. I kind of see that I have a UL. Maybe it'd be interesting to list out all the, the participants. Um, great. So for this, I'm using Dropbox for this demo. Uh, actually, in production, we use Google Cloud Storage. It's a very similar um, CDN. This is just easier, so I don't have to copy and paste too much. And all our demos are actually running in production on Google Cloud Storage. So I'm going to get this public link. I'm going to upload this stub to see if anything interesting happens. I'm going to start this Hangout. So you saw that link that loads your, your sandboxed Hangout, like I did in the demo today. Let's see. OK, great. My hair looks better. Give it a second. Fantastic. Let's just dive into the console. Um, so you see setup stuff, we did some console logging, but really nothing happens. Uh, press button, but it doesn't do a whole lot. That's because we haven't um, registered callbacks to handle those events, and we haven't done any methods to actually do anything with those events. Fine. So let's go back to our... So the very first thing to actually start these event handling is to register the methods that we want to handle. So in our, in our start my app, which is our bootstrap method, I'm going to start uh, including some of the handlers. Uh, so everything is in the Gappy, which is Google API, namespace dot hangout dot data on participants. Hope my handwriting is good enough to help us today. Uh, function. So now we are going to actually pass in this event object. Right, so we're actually calling the, the register method. This, the dot add is registering callback. So now I'm going to register the very cleverly named update participants method. So now whenever the on participant changed event gets fired, we pass in this event object to the method update participants. Fantastic. So now, if I were to load that, we would see um, some of the logs being written every time a participant joins. I'm just going to do a few more of these registrations. 
uh, gappy dot hangout dot data dot on state change dot add. And this is for the shared state. This is going to pass the, this blob of information that we, we can arbitrarily pass, pass to record things like the, event, the location change and um, any, other, any other pieces of data we want to track. <coughs> so API, I'm going to actually do a little logging here. And then actually have it respond to this event with update state and event. And this is actually going to pass the state object to our state handler and do something cool. I forgot the parentheses. And the last event handler that we want to include is for the mic volume. And that's in the AV namespace. On volume change not add. And then we're going to pass another function. And what I'm just doing here is going to do the same um, dot inner HTML. Volume changed. Volume changed. And then update, just in case any other participant um, have joined. OK. Uh, so, hopefully I didn't make any typos. Now when you do a change to the XML, even though it's publicly available, we only fetch it when you tell us to. So I just have to make sure to refetch that data by resaving that URL. I don't have to change it or anything. Uh, let's launch a new Hangout. Cool. Get the console. I see a type error. That means I made a mistake. Um, let's check out the syntax. If you guys see anything like a missing semicolon, you can please feel free to let me know. Damn. On volumes change, actually. But I think I missed that, uh, that I there. Let's see what happens. Did I save it? I, I saved, I think. Another type error, different line. All right. We, who can, whoever can find that first error, they win, a, they win some stickers. On event, uh, what's that? Uh, type error? It's basically, I probably spelled, oh, I forgot the Hangout namespace. Let's see if that solved it. I, I saved it. Right, right, right. I, this change, I haven't done it. Let's hope we can move. There we go. So now all the, the events are, are registered with my callbacks, but nothing's going to happen because I haven't done anything with the data. So I might have some you know, press button calls, but that's not very interesting. So the next thing we're going to do is take those registered methods and actually do something interesting with those, those objects to get returned. So back to this. Uh, let's start with here. So to, if I had a, uh, multiple users, which I think we have I have some colleagues here that can 
demo it. Um, when that update participant gets called, a new user joins, and I want to do something with that user object. So here I'm just going to display all the users' names in an, in a UL, right? So it's pretty simple. When that method gets called, I'm going to create an object called things equals, and this is actually using one of the synchronous methods, the getters. So I'm just going to get get the current state of the participants. Right? So that's going to get all the current participants when, I, when this method is called um, first. Then I'm going to do a little for loop. I'm going to have a party object which stores all the participants. Um, Right? And this is going to let me iterate all, all from that object that I just got. I'm going to do a nested for loop. Uh, no, first I want to do plus equals. This is going to list all the current participants in an LI. Thank you. You got a sticker for that? Maybe two. And party dot person dot display name. So this is actually now accessing uh, from that return object um, the display name field. And we're going to put some spaces. Do that nested for loop that I mentioned to iterate over all the individuals. Do another getter. Ah, so now I'm going to also be including the current uh, participant volume. Volume uh, party dot id. So this is another getter, right? So I'm going to grab each participant's name and their their current volume and display that in the uh, What's that? Oh, good. Nice catch. Another good catch. I, I, I have a lot of stickers, by the way. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Plus equals. Now we're going to add a um, hash symbol to sh simulate volume. So all make sense once we get it running. And then return value plus equals. And then close. I'm missing something. Oh, yes. Uh, the closing li. OK. So now, if this has syntax free, thanks to your help, uh, we should get all the participants and list their names and their current volume. So I'm just going to still demo this with one person so we can make sure we've done this properly. OK, cool. So that's my name. It's pulling it from my Google Plus profile. And you can see that it's tracking the volume of my voice through the microphone and displaying it as a hashtag. Very similar operation to what we did in the demo, but written with pretty simple JavaScript. So just one more bit of it. It's the last piece, just to show that we can do shared state. And with the shared state, what you're doing is submitting a JSON file into basically a data store, and we handle all the passing back and forth. With that JSON, there's one limitation currently that it has to be a string. So if you're doing anything uh, more complex, you should use JSON stringifier and the JSON parser. Um, 
the nice thing about this is you just submit a blob initially, so it can be a raw J um, JSON file, and then you submit deltas and get deltas just to get changes. You can also use the getters and setters to overwrite that entire method, or sorry, that entire object, or get it in pieces. And to do it, if you want to edit a field, you just overwrite it, and if you want a new one, you just write to it. Um, so in this count button click, when that gets called, we do a simple var uh, count. And this is, what this is going to do is actually get the current, the current state of the shared state. The name is very straightforward. And I'm actually going to access from that object the count field. And we're going to use that same field uh, to, to manage the, the count. And then var count equals 0 if raw count. count equals, remember it's a string, so I've got to parse that int, raw count, and then that gets the current state of the, of the count, and then we're going to now overwrite it with hangout.data.submit delta. So by submitting delta, we can, only, we can just submit a small change or overwrite a small change without sending the whole blob. That syntax, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, so we pass in our JSON objects. Uh, we're doing a string, so I'm going to cheat a little bit, and that's going to parse it for us into a string. And that should work. Where is it? Ah, fantastic. Yeah, so it became a debugging session. It's fine. You guys are helping me, helping you. It's great. Um, and you saw, even with, the, you know, I'm on stage, it's not exactly the best uh, scenario to code, but the code is really simple, right? So if you have time, you can plan it, you can not uh, have a few too many drinks the night before, it's going to be really easy to build uh, interactive applications. And if all goes well, So there's my volume again at 1, 2. Uh, the screen is cropping it, but that's a shared state. Now I'm going to actually show you how to add another person. Ade, are you in the room? There's Ade. He's also on Google+. He just gave a talk. Um, for doing Hangout apps, like I said, it's not in public availability. So you just have to add a participant um, to your team. Um, Ade Wale, I hope you don't mind me sharing your Gmail around. Once he's on the team, I can send him the link to my Hangout, and he can, he can join and actually co-develop if I, if I can figure that properly. So like in the demo I did today, I will launch that Hangout. This URL is now fixed for this particular session. I can use IM. I can use email. Uh, for me, it's, the easiest is just using Google+. Add A. Now, when he gets that, he can go ahead and join the, the Hangout. And then we can demonstrate the, the full shared state and um, multiple participant component of the application. It takes a second to propagate, especially in this, this network. I'm lucky I can even do streaming. Meantime, I'm going to start counting stuff. Share it again. Hey, at least we got the code to work finally, huh? Hang. This is the one, right? Yeah, your Gmail, please. 
And then we can wrap up the coding session. So it found that add a join, that event, it added into the list, and it add, uh, yeah, please clap. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and he's showing everybody else here. Uh, the current limitation to Hangouts is 10 participants, including yourself. I don't know what the future will bring. Can you do Hangout apps Yes, you can. Uh, no, you can't. Hang not hangout apps, only just regular Hangouts. Oh, let's, see, let's save the questions for the end so I can go through the last bit, um, and then you can have as much questions as you want. Very simple app. I did it on stage. You probably can do a better one uh, on the car ride home. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then just the last bit of slides. So what did we see? We were able to listen to events, registering a Gappy Hangout Get Participants. We were able to share data, so we could submit deltas. We can register that, change, the, that um, event handler. And we could also access the AVI components. That's with the uh, on volumes change and get participants volume method. Very simple, and there's a lot more methods. So I'm just going to quickly run through the Hangouts uh, API. It's fully documented on our developer site, but it's worth going uh, through it quickly in this crowd. So we've divided into a couple namespaces. Uh, the first one is participants, and that gets information about the participants in a Hangout. Now, a participant ID is actually different than a Google Plus ID. And the reason is because an application, you can actually go into multiple Hangouts at the same time, in the same Hangouts, and this allows you to differentiate between users. Uh, you can actually get their Hangout ID uh, as well as their participant ID, or sorry, their user ID as well as their Hangout ID in that, that object that we return. It uh, includes their, 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 their Hangout ID, their Google Plus URL, um, whether or not they have the app installed, image information. And you can use that further to get more Google Plus information through our RESTful API. Then that shared state um, namespace, that's the data namespace, you can get the blob. You can register methods. You can submit deltas. You can overwrite. You can get more metadata about the, about the overall state. Very simple. The AV components, so the microphone. You can know if, they're if they have a video, whether it's muted. Uh, we have an interesting one for avatar. So uh, you can actually override that static image for them, and it gets interesting. You can overlay images. We, we actually have a demo uh, on the website you can run today, just create a new project, that has that same talking robot, but for their face. So instead of being in the center, they, they talk. Um, there's a cool, some cool applications for that that I'm sure you guys could, could implement. The layout, pretty basic one, but we have a cool method. Uh, you notice when at a join, it had that banner at the top. You can actually write your own banners, uh, not just for joining, but for whatever, events. Um, scores in a game, as well as the chat information and some highlighting around users. And the last uh, namespace is the Hangout metadata, uh, locale, number of participants, uh, displayed versus displayed participants, uh, visible, things like that. Now, this is a very new area. The Hangout apps have only been around for a month. Uh, we just did a major rewrite of our APIs, and we're seeing fantastic adoption with some of those examples that I gave before. People are building you know, uh, learning applications, uh, productivity applications, but the truth is, this is unmapped frontier. So if you're a front-end developer, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're a job, if you have interesting ideas for startups, you should be including Hangouts in, in that idea because it's so new. There's ideas that may have been done elsewhere, but not in the Hangout medium. So it can emerge into new experiences and, and bring you to n new possibilities. And it's wide open. Uh, we built a simple game this morning. I just built a simple proof of concept demo. But there's so many, op so many options of areas you can explore, uh, from education to medicine, games with real-time backends, productivity for project planning, and you know, new forms of communication, sciences, architecture and design, and music and entertainment. And these are just some that I, I quickly created. I'm sure you have better, more ideas. Now with that, there's a lot of sources for information to learn more and ask questions. We've launched a new developer site. And to get to the Google Plus platform specifically, go to developers.google.com slash the plus symbol. And that will give you to our entire platform. And it's plus Hangouts uh, for Hangout apps. And we have other parts of our, that we talked about today. Also a very uh, active discussion forum where my entire team goes there and answers questions, but also other developers are answering questions before we can even get there. So it's a great place to ask, ask or find previously answered questions. 
Uh, we also have office hours every Wednesday, like I mentioned. It's 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, so that might be a little bit late for you, uh, a.m. But uh, we do have a team in, in, in the UK, uh, at Ace here, and we're starting to look at how we can um, support more regions uh, with Hangouts. Uh, but it's open, public, so you can ask questions, you can come and you can go, and you can talk to us face to face. And that's, again, my Google Plus profile URL. And if you really have a question that you want to use email, if you're still doing that, then you can email me at jbr.google.com. I want to thank you and answer any questions you may have. Sure. Do we have a mic for questions, or people are just going to yell it? Okay, I'll repeat it. Is that you? Uh, does the sandbox environment allow for using third-party APIs? So like, for example, the base path of creation, so it is an iframe, um, but it's also rock, uh, HTML. So what works in iframes will work here. So we have an issue with cross-domain. Uh, so cross-domain AJAX will work if you use, let's say, cores, headers, and those types of things. So if you own your own API, great. If uh, the API provides cores, that will work perfectly. Um, there are other solutions. Uh, and we're working on our own implementation of uh, cross-domain to help you with that. How are they being reviewed, you know, stuff? Basic Ajax calls. I, I had to cut it from the slides because the talk was shorter, um, but we, our other demo, which is also online, does an Ajax call to an app engine, REST endpoint. Uh, we also do cross-domain using the cores. What I meant is that you can do stuff that's not necessarily good for you that's on third-party APIs or even just show other stuff. Yes, you can. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it's locked down. So the, like, like you saw, I had to register a developer to actually use the application. Uh, so you have to register each one by one. And when we go more broadly, we're going to solve that, that challenge as well. Thanks. Can I get Yes, so on our developer site, uh, we have a bunch of sample examples that are running on our uh, Google Cloud storage, as well as the source code. And these, the source code for the application I just wrote will also be online. Uh, for the developer site, uh, developers.google.com slash plus slash hangouts, I want to say. Uh, I saw more hands. Right here? Do you have any vague idea for future pricing of this stuff, or will it uh, be free for non-commercial, or...? Whatever. So we don't have future plans um, set, and we also don't have anything to discuss. A lot of the Google APIs are free to use, um, but we're starting to introduce some paid APIs that make sense for both us and developers. Right now, this is free to use, just like Google Plus itself, and you know, we hope we can, we can make it work. Yes? Um, can you integrate Flash into the experience, like as a Flash object in the iframe? So my dirty secret was today's demo was actually a Flash app. And the reason we built that demo was actually for game partners who have pre-existing Flash games, and it just works. Uh, you have to do some sort of smart use case with the, the, the cross-domain XML, uh, but that code was just a simple JavaScript proxy that uses, for Flash developers, external interface, and it's five lines of code to, to make that work. So that same application can be written in HTML5. We just we didn't um, Flash for that very reason. A small question is, when is it... Uh, when is it uh, going, like, an estimation to be public, and what's the user experience going to be finding those applications? It's going to be a marketplace? Or? So in terms of the, availabil the general availability of the of, uh, Hangout apps, well, it actually depends on you. So we're trying to develop this together, and the more developers we have testing and making recommendations, we can get this out sooner. Uh, I don't have an exact timeline, but if you look at the rate that Google Plus has been releasing features, Every two weeks, we have a new API or another major release. We hope to keep that pace and get Hangouts apps as, out as soon as possible. And your second question was a marketplace. We don't know, right? Uh, we already have marketplace solutions that seem to be working. And we'll try to figure out what works best for Hangout apps in terms of discovery and distribution. And there's a third question in there that you didn't highlight, but it was the user experience. This Hangout experience is actually different than the production Hangout experience, if you saw. 
The sandbox is running a, a, an older code base. It's going to move in line with the final release of Hangouts or the next evolution of Hangouts um, you know, as that, that code base gets updated. So uh, in terms of Hangouts in general, you can actually join a Hangout from the mobile device. It works great, uh, high quality. Um, and in terms of having mobile support for Hangout apps, it's actually high priority. There's a lot of good ideas and suggestions, and the team is looking how we can actually implement that. How soon or you know, whether that, how that's going to manifest itself, I don't know at this time, but you know, I'm really excited to see something like that. So more hands. Yes. Is there a plan to get to more than uh, 10 people simultaneously? Well, as you can imagine, having 10 people with high quality video is it's pretty complicated as well as expensive. Um, of course, we can do that, and we're looking at the ways that we can support that. And one of the ways is with the existing Hangouts on our infrastructure, try to make that more broad. In terms of more multi-user uh, Hangout, uh, we're, we're looking at it. I can't say for sure. Peer to peer or uh, for a server? From Sorry. Is it peer to peer or from <laughs> this was? <laughs> no, it's actually built on our existing infrastructure for Google Talk Video. We've heavily modified it to ha support a bigger bandwidth and um, dynamic throttling for users. Uh, and so it's actually direct. It goes through our servers. So this way we can have guaranteed performance across um, all the participants. Any more questions? It is not. It's a custom JavaScript library you built. For this particular implementation, we wanted to use a um, you know, custom library. It worked better for our team. And if that's all the questions we have, I'd like to thank you. I invite everybody to come up and grab one of these stickers. And please follow, follow up with me if you have any additional questions.